Hey everybody, I want to uh, just touch base a little bit. I just finished grading module four. I feel I'm a little bit behind in my grading mostly because of uh, spending a lot of time uh, writing to everybody, particularly around last week's module three and then making a decision to ask people to redo that. Um, so if you are feeling like you're a little behind, uh, you're, we're all in the same boat, but it was important to me to ask you guys to do that because um, Module 3 really set you up as a base, and you will see that there are a lot of upcoming modules that ask you to go back to your work in Module 3. So if you didn't get it or it wasn't well done, it uh, would be problematic for you uh, in the future, and I don't didn't want the grades for many other weeks to be bad because the work from module three was was not good. Um, I'm going to talk about module four in a minute, but as long as I'm talking about the impacts of module three, I just want to remind you that module uh, five, which we are looking at the jobs that you recommended or the um, the the uh, the recommendations that you had based on module three of what kind of of positions you might create to help the organization further its mission, um, you're going to be diving into those a little bit. You may feel that after you redo module three, you want to go and check that your module five actually has the meat that it needs to have. If, if you do wanna do that and you need a couple extra days, um, if you think you'd like to go back and take a look at that uh, before I grade, uh, I think I might give you guys a couple days to do that. It's just, the point again that module three is a building block for a lot of what comes next and to the extent that uh, you have done a better job in revising module three everything that follows should be better and you might want to take a look at module five as well okay you do not have to redo it just suggesting you might uh, want to go back now that you have a new understanding of module three sorry my camera is uh, shifting a little bit and take another look okay so um let me talk a little bit about module four. First of all, we're pretty much still in the first third of the semester. And so your ability to actually assess what you heard from the, uh, from the people that you interviewed uh, is kind of based on your common sense at this point or any prior, prior experience you have in terms of volunteering personally or uh, overacting uh, over, um, I lost the word I was looking for, but supervising, let's just use that, overseeing uh, other volunteers, etc. So um, if you have a lot of experience, you might have been able to pick out some things that didn't seem right or could have been done better or um, were, you know, recommendations that you would have easily made. But for some of you, this is the first time that this whole concept of volunteering and managing volunteers, finding volunteers, figuring out where to use them in your organization, uh, some of, for some of you, this is all new. You have all no doubt been volunteers, but thinking about the entire strategic uh, plan and follow through for volunteers is probably something a lot of you have not done before. So having said that, um, if you will notice, I asked you to interview somebody who was not the expert in volunteer management anybody but the volunteer engagement coordinator, manager, whatever they call their person in their organization. Some of these organizations don't have that position, um, but some of them did. And part of what we were looking for, if you tie what we're doing, if you ask yourself the question, why did she have me do this in light of the material she gave us to look at, which is, as I have, I think, expressed before, a really good question to ask yourself right up front is to meta think, remember, be reflective, um, to think about why are we doing this? What is it that I'm supposed to learn? Will help you take away more. So the question, what do these interview questions that she's having us do and the person that she's having us interview have to do with, with the readings or the materials she gave us? One answer is that one of the things that was covered in chapter four, or I mean in module four uh, materials is the need for um, everybody in the organization, including the paid staff, to have a really clear understanding of the way volunteers contribute to the mission 
and to be integrated in a way that both the volunteers feel that they are a part of things and the, um, the staff, the paid staff, feel that uh, they really understand the role of volunteers and that they feel comfortable with them. Uh, you may recall that one of the problems with a paid staff who aren't who, who aren't aware or aren't that knowledgeable is that um, well there's a lot of problems but one of them is that they worry that that they might take over the, their job another one is that they just assume that because people are not paid that they won't be responsible and so on and so forth so I asked you to basically talk to people who were not volunteer managers first to see what do they know? How much do they know? And if you uh, read through some of your classmates work, you would see that that what they knew was all over the place. Some of them, frankly, had to answer I don't know to some of the questions they were asked and others of them could give very detailed, uh, knowledgeable explanations. So you can see that organizations are all over the map. Another thing that I hope you noticed, and if you didn't, you might want to take a minute to go back and check out. Several of you actually interviewed people, different people from the same organization. And you could see that depending on who you talk to in the organization, I think we had two people from Boys and Girls Club. I think we had two people that talked to Ability360. I think we had a couple people that talked to folks at the zoo. And I can't remember what else. Um, maybe there were a couple of people that talked to Girl Scouts. I can't remember. But the interesting thing is that those interview responses did not look the same. So we can see uh, that, um, that a consistent message isn't necessarily happening even in an organization where some people are very knowledgeable. An, an interesting thing that happened to me today is I happened to have lunch with a wonderful woman named um, Linda Taylart and she is a volunteer manager uh, by profession. She has been for many of the years of her career and we were talking about some work that she's been doing with a couple as a consultant with a couple of organizations and she was expressing that no matter how big and how seemingly well to do with money to spend and sophisticated an organization is it's no guarantee that the people who are running their volunteer program know best practices there's a really good reason for that. It's only been the last maybe 10 years or so, maybe not even quite that long, that volunteering has been something that we teach. We tend to basically think that managing people, uh, finding people who work for free should be easy because I'm not sure why actually, if you stop and think about it, it's kind of hard. Um, but often what has happened is an organization will take a really good volunteer and when they realize it would be useful to have a staff member to coordinate the volunteers, they will ask a really long time good volunteer if they would like to take that job. Well, you know, being a really good student does not guarantee that you will be a good teacher. You might like to learn, but you might not like to teach. Uh, you might not like developing lesson plans. You might not know anything about how people learn. Um, same with volunteering and managing volunteers. Um, you might be a great volunteer who loves to show up and gets a lot out of contributing to the cause and the social aspects of volunteering or feeling like you're being useful. Um, but that does not necessarily mean that you know how to manage people at, at the worst case scenario or what the best practices are even at the best case scenario. So, <coughs> excuse me, I'm getting whatever is going around and losing my voice. So anyway, I think what I wanted you to see is just how different these things are. Also, I'm sure some of you noticed that some of these volunteer programs sounded really strategically sound and some of them sounded kind of loosey-goosey. Um, and I guess I would say this, you probably don't know this now, but it will be interesting for you at some point down the line toward the end of class when we have had each module that helps us learn all the different pieces of um, strategically engaging volunteers from, from thinking about where they fit all the way to evaluating them at the end and uh, everything in between. Once you are familiar with all these ideas, it might be fun to go back and look at these interviews and see what you think now. Now that you kind of know what the best practices are, how does that change what you said? In fact, 
I think I will give you that as uh, at the end of the semester as an extra credit uh, opportunity if you need it is after you've learned everything to go back. All right, I don't want to take up too much more time on um, module four. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them for me in the Q&A of the discussion. I'm sure whatever your questions are, others would be interested. If you are particularly want to connect with me about something having to do with your points or your grades, uh, just email me personally on that. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about the classroom. Um, again, I mentioned in my last video that I think that students had less trouble last semester because for whatever reason, more of them opted to work in teams and that kept them, I think, accountable to each other and accountable to checking exactly what the questions and the assignments are. And I am still finding, as I read through your module four, that a lot of people did not actually um, answer the specific questions that were asked. Some of you just threw the interview up and didn't answer the two questions at all. Um, many of you did the, the interview and the two questions, but uh, just kind of made generic comments on your classmates stuff and did not look at the specific instructions for um, the classmate engagement. I want to remind you that there are specific instructions on the discussion board in that part of the module for exactly what it is, your, what questions you're supposed to answer, um, and there are also often specific instructions for what you are supposed to discuss with your classmates. I don't think up these questions just for variety. I actually ask myself, what are the questions that we need to be thinking about in order to tie the materials and all that information that you just took in to real life uh, practice? And so if you don't actually think about the questions that I gave you, then you have missed the opportunity to, to um, engage in a way that's gonna make you a better practitioner uh, when you get out of here. So please be careful about that. Also, at first for, for module four, I kind of hammered everybody uh, because of failure to follow the directions. And then I thought, okay, I'm gonna give you one more week. Uh, you probably did lose a few points if you did that. Um, if you really screwed it up, up and down, you might have lost a lot of points. But for most of you, I just gave you a reminder to please pay closer attention to the instructions. Um, and this is your warning. I'm not going to be Miss Nice Guy anymore or Miss Nice Gal, whatever. Okay, is there anything else I want to talk to you about? Um, yeah, please, please don't leave off the part of engaging with your classmates. Your voice, your experience, and your thoughts are part of the learning process for everybody else. You only have your own voice and your own thoughts and your own experiences and frame of reference. And not only does everyone else learn by hearing yours, but you learn by being exposed to the way other people look at things and other people think about them and the experiences that they have had. Um, the world is a very nuanced, complicated place, and there isn't a one-size-fits-all answer. If, um, if any of you are familiar with uh, uh, a book called the Talmud, it's, it's a bunch of rabbis that are arguing over what looks like a rule of law, and they're looking at all the different situations in which you might try to apply it, and how it fits or doesn't fit or has to be adjusted for uh, each of those different situations. I think it's a really good analogy for how best practices fit or don't fit or need to be adjusted in different um people situations that come up in volunteer management and it's all of your background experiences, all of your thoughts, all of your nuanced uh, explanations for things that really broaden our exposure to possibilities and give you much more, make you much more equipped for when you are out there in the world and ready to apply it. So please don't deprive us of your comments on our work and please uh, be open to accepting the comments and expanding your mind uh, when other people comment on your work. Okay, just want to remind you that um, week six is coming up. We're going to be looking a little bit about re at recruiting, and um, I hope some of you actually availed yourself of the volunteer fair 
that happened last weekend and got to see how many different organizations were busy recruiting. One thing I noticed they all had in common was a lot of bling, a lot of, what do they call that stuff that you take home with yourself? There's a word for it. Um, I don't want to say slag, that's not it, but it rhymes with that. Anyway, whatever it is I'm looking for, it's the stuff you take home. There was like enormous amounts of candy. I really was good. I only took one little tiny Tootsie Roll thing. Those were my favorites when I was a kid. But uh, obviously food is a big one. And, um, and, and I will just say I had a conversation over the course of the week with one of the volunteer managers at the zoo. I believe there are four working at the Phoenix Zoo. And um, we were talking about retention issues that he has around event volunteers. And one of the questions I asked him was, what do you do for the volunteers when they come out? And one of the things that they don't do, which kind of shocked me, was feed them, especially since so many of the event volunteers are students. Food is a big deal. And we talked about why he wasn't feeding them. And I strongly recommended that he added food in. And I saw evidence of food being a big draw at the fair as well. Anyway, um, I hope that you will bring your own experiences being recruited to volunteer work and whether that has been good or bad for you to the conversation that we have um, for week six. And I am looking forward to uh, diving in to your week five or module five and, and taking a look at what you've done there. Any questions again? discussion Q&A, unless they're just individual to you or about your grade or whatever, then just email me and I will get back to you. See you on the board.